totally nonsense on Nonsense News Nation. Totally. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of Totally Nonsense. My name is Brandon Scott Ellis, Hebrew name Shmuel Melch. My name is Scott, and I'm, I don't have a yarmulke on this time. I'm sorry I'm not as Jewish as you are. I haven't worn a yarmulke in a time. You know what the thing about yarmulkes? People are wearing it as masks nowadays because um, the coronavirus is that bad. Yes, we are still in quarantine. I'm still stuck in my basement. Scott is stuck in his basement. And what are we doing, Scott, besides creating podcasts? How are we spending our time? Well, besides right now, making this podcast, we are playing a lot of games, destroying our bandwidth, and not paying anything because we can't go anywhere. Exactly. So for the average person, this quarantine thing absolutely sucks but for gamers such as myself and a a certain scott honickman this is a wet dream come true i came true last night but we're going to talk about games that maybe you can play to pass the time games that may be suited better for this quarantine period and we also have the usual nonsensical news stories that we'll talk about and maybe we'll, we'll have a good laugh so, you want to start out with a, a story, Scott, and we'll, we'll just go from there? You want to talk about a story before the game? Yeah, well, just one story, just one story, just give a little little tease, a little strip tease. Show a little bit of skin, and then we'll go to the game stuff. Before this podcast, I mentioned this story briefly to you, Brandon. Excuse me, it's from India, and the headline is, Quarantine Man Runs Out Half-Naked and Fatally Bites Elderly Woman. So, in India... There was a a young man in his twenties, and he just like you or me, he just couldn't take it anymore. He was quarantined, like everyone else on Earth right now, and he just he couldn't take the the solitude any longer. He ran out, and there was an elderly woman, his neighbor. She was outside, and he was going crazy, and he just jumped on her and bit her neck. <laughs> That's the conclusion he came with. That's exact. That's that's the solution to his problems. I, I get it. You want to run out and be free and be wild, so, or what, whatever. So have you? But to bite an elderly woman on the neck? And all the according to the police, all they could write in the report was that he was mentally disturbed. I mean, most of us are very disturbed right now because we can't go anywhere and solitude is slowly killing us all. But this one man in particular, he must have been an extreme extrovert. He must have been going to parties every day. And he just couldn't take the thought of not going to another Hollywood India party. And he just, he did what Rick did. Scott. Out of The Walking Dead. Rick and Walking Dead, he bit someone's jugular or whatever. <laughs> like this, 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 this. Scott, I have, I have two theories to this. Uh, my first theory is um, he's one of those young people that are, are like really into old people, you know, sexually speaking. That is a thing. You can look that up. And he's been longing for his honey. By honey, I mean some prune juice because he's into that elderly lady. But the thing is, with elderly people, it's very dangerous for them to be in contact with other people because they're very at risk for this disease. And he's been quarantined for like two days and it's been – he's been, you know, sexually feeling it. He he doesn't have to get busted alone playing video games like me or you, Scott. The only thing he had was this old woman and she was – she's gone And so he lost it and decided to give her a nice little hickey. Little did he know, she was so fragile, and she couldn't take the slight little hickey he gave her. The little banana hickey turned into a serious problem. It's like a coronavirus venom from a vampire. Yeah, that's my second theory. He's just straight up a vampire. Or, you know what, he's he's Jared Leto, method acting, because he's going to be in the Morbius movie, Morbius the Living Vampire. Morbius is like a Spider-Man villain. Yeah, I saw that. I don't know. That's probably so. Old, though. He went on like a retreat, meditating for a while with his cult. <laughs> and then he came out, and he's just like, "Wow, the world's different now." Nobody's on this. Imagine coming back to New York City during this, and nobody's out. You... I, I feel like he he was taking a break from acting, and he was meditating maybe in India with his his cult of 
30 seconds of summer what's his band 30 seconds to mars band <laughs> whatever it's called and he's like oh my god I, got, I gotta get ready i gotta get ready for to play morbius and so he ran out of his shrine and bit an old lady and he's like perfect i feel like morbius again and then the authorities got him or the coronavirus got him first. I don't know. So you think this man is Jared Leto, the man who attacked this man? Who else could it be? Who else is crazy enough? You know, when he was, unfortunately, the Joker in Suicide Squad, he sent his, uh, his ca- the cast of Suicide Squad used condoms. Really? Yes. Because he got so into the role. So who's to say that he wouldn't do that as Morbius and bite old ladies after he went on some cult retreat? He sent them used condoms. Yeah. Now that sounds. I went to use them. Probably not Jared Leto. Who wants to be a Jared Leto? Birds of Prey, the Harley Quinn movie that came out in February, it was all about her being done with Jared Leto and being so sick of him. They had to make that movie because she was just like, "Listen, I can't act at this pace, and you know I'm crazy. I'm like a clown, but I'm not crazy enough to be a Jared Leto." And then that's how they made Birds of Prey, the Harley Quinn movie. All right, let's uh, let's continue on. Let's talk a little bit about uh, video games, and then we'll go to some news stories. We'll go back and forth, back and forth. When when you're in quarantine, in quarantine, your perspective on gaming changes a little bit because when everything was normal, you could you were looking forward to the new game that was coming out, but you can't really do that anymore unless GameStop's still open. I don't know, Stop. but they gave in. They thank goodness, but. You have to look at your shelf now and be like, all right, what games haven't I beaten? What games can I play? And uh, one game that I do recommend for some people, not myself, that did come out recently is the new Animal Crossing game. I find Animal Crossing incredibly boring. You talk to uh, these furry looking things and sometimes they flirt with you, but I'm not into that. I'm not into a a duck giving me the bedroom eyes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so that, uh, not into that. And as far as gameplay goes, all you do is try to help your crippling debt by selling apples that you picked on the floor and fishing and collecting seashells. And to me, that's the most boring thing. But for people like myself, like you, Scott, like everyone in the world right now who can't really get out of their house to have some sort of virtual life outside side of that where you get to talk to the animals, uh, possibly sleep with them. I don't know if this is a T-rated Animal Crossing game, the new one. And um, you, you get to you get to buy things and go to the store, something that's kind of hard to do or a little anxiety-ridden nowadays. So I recommend Animal Crossing. I, I'm, I know my, my gamer senses are, are tingling badly from just the words Animal Crossing, but, but I have to recommend it. I bought Animal Crossing. Really? At 60 bucks, you'll never get back. Well, I split it 50-50 with Alexa, my sister. Ridiculously. She she's playing it right now actually. She's upstairs. It's not I, it's, it's not playing. There's not you're not playing Animal Crossing is not a game, it's a life. And cuz we have no life, I recommend it. If this wasn't quarantine, I would say you're better off playing anything else. I, <laughs> but to have to feel like you're living again, play Animal Crossing. I think when this quarantine is over, we're going to have a serious problem. So many people will have given their lives to Animal Crossing and <laughs> um, attracted to physically animals. So <laughs> the, world, the first thing that's going to happen is they're going to go to some remote clearing, some some plane, and then mate with like a like a camel or or a, <laughs> or a, or a duck. Because that's what they did in Animal Crossing. They don't know any other life. They weren't allowed outside during this time. They were in... So, <laughs> Scott, I mean, I I played Animal Crossing New Leaf, the game I have with 3DS, for about five minutes because that's all I could really take with the game at a time. It's fun for five minutes and then that's it. And my dog came in the room and I had to shoo him away because I started to feel the attraction to animals. <laughs> So I had to wait 15 minutes lying on a in a fetal position on the floor just to get rid of these horrible devilish urges. They're very fun. They're, yeah, so fighting games. You get a little angry because you're stuck at home, and you you wanna you wanna punch the other people you live with because they're so annoying. But you're a sworn pacifist and you won't. So comes fighting games. 
answer to your prayer. I've been playing um, a game called Soul Calibur VI. It's a game where you fight with different people from different regions with uh, different swords. So you have someone from medieval Europe and you have someone from feudal Japan fighting each other. And it's pretty interesting. And I got the game from my older brother many months ago before he moved. And I didn't pick it up. But since I had time during quarantine, I picked it up. I played it. And I got a lot of aggression out. That's good. Any fun games you've been playing, Scott? I've been playing... Um, I mean, Smash. I've been playing a lot. Fighting games. Super. I've been playing some Fatal Fury with um, Terry Bogard, who's now in Smash. Right. Okay, cool. I haven't been playing too many fighting games lately. I've been playing a lot of Doom. Like, so much. Doom is like... Doom Eternal is like the game, right? In my opinion. It's like it's like the perfect game for myself. It's just extremely bloody and gory. But there's no cursing and there's no sex. There's no cursing. So you're saying that Star Trek now has more cursing than Doom. Brandon, this, the gory game. This podcast right now. You fight Nazis. <laughs> this this one more time. This podcast has more cursing than Doom Eternal right now. I wouldn't have it any other way. So how about we'll we'll take a break from video games. I want to talk about a, a story that I have here. Please. Uh, this is about Abbey Road. I'm not talking about the album, although I really, really want to. I'm talking about the actual place in London, England. Uh, it's a it's a very popular tourist spot where a lot of people do the little beetle poses. They walk on the street or whatever. And I, I really feel for people that live around there and how annoying it must be. Let's hear. It must be really cheap to live there if you have to deal with all these crazy tourists. It's like the stairs in uh, the Bronx from the from Joker. Well, Brandon, no one's there right now. Exactly. So there's like a, a live stream that's been going on for a long time. And you can watch it right now. And it shows the actual Abbey Road Road where the Beatles were and all these obnoxious tourists posing and everything. But to combat the coronavirus and people crowding where they're promoting social distance and they're painting over or they painted over uh the actual road to reduce crowds uh twitter user said um quote i became obsessed with the abbey road webcam last week as there were fewer and fewer tourists taking photos there and it started looking like just another zebra crossing now you hardly see any pedestrians at all uh, it was most crowded actually this is a fun fact in august when Abbey Road, the album, reached 50 years. It was 50 years old, which is quite an accomplishment. But I guess 51 isn't a popular age because they're just kind of closing everything down, including this popular tourist attraction. I mean, everyone likes the Beatles. It's cliche to say, but everyone likes, nay, loves the Beatles. And Abbey Road is, is so iconic. Where... So, in England is Abbey Road. What, it's in London. It's in London? Yeah. Oh, I'll be there. I hope so. It's on Abbey Road. Oh, it's on it. Anyway, uh, the most you see on the webcams are uh, like one or two pedestrians walking by, risking the coronavirus, hopefully wearing masks at the very least, and keeping a proper distance. Mm -hmm. Much like we are right now. Exactly. Much like we are. A lot of people... All people really are kind of stuck in our boat and they can't really go to these popular tourist attractions and they just want a little nice adventure. Lucky for you, I have a solution to help you with your adventure problems. If you want to explore, if you want to see the world, I recommend a nice video game. And the video game I'm recommending is a game that came out when the Xbox 360 came out. And you can probably get it for five bucks at GameStop. If you're dumb enough to go to GameStop, it is a Japanese RPG called Enchanted Arms, and I've been playing it on and off since I was 13, and I finally beat it, Scott, because of quarantine. And how is it? You like? I need to. I need to tell you about this game. So, um, it's sort of like the gameplay, is sort of like Fire Emblem, where when you enter a battle. It's like a chess, like a like a chessboard where you get to move your characters and strategically move them around to do different attacks, and that's what really compelled me. The story is the most is as anime as you can get. 
it starts off it's they it's like a world combining technology and magic and the main character Atsuma is in this Hogwarts type school with a Snape like teacher and his friends Toya who is the typical uh, anime stereotype of the reserved intelligent guy who sometimes wears glasses but not Who's all the time with his two fingers right <laughs> He just pulls him with his two fingers, even when he's not wearing them, because <laughs> it's just a four. I've done it. I'm I'm guilty of that. And he has another friend called Makoto. And the thing about Makoto, which is so special, he is a gay icon. I have not seen a character in fiction as gay as this man. And I mean no offense. I have nothing but respect for gay people. I'm I'm like 14% gay on my mother's side, so I respect the gays. But here's the thing. He's madly in love with Toya, and he, he talks like this, and is like his fighting combat like is like a saxophone. He plays it. The thing is, it came out in like 2006, 2007, and this was even before like in the U.S., uh, gay marriage was completely legalized in all 50 states. So I don't know, this is a big deal. This may have made me the the more progressive person that I am playing this as a uh, stupid child. You think so? I think so. I think Makoto has shaped my life in more ways than I can give anyone credit for. It's Makoto that made me the way I am. So uh, so this is like a turn-based JRPG. It is, yeah. Oh. And uh, the another interesting thing, there's uh, creatures called golems. And they're sort of like Pokemon or Karabans. And Bomberman, because yes, Bomberman once tried to copy Pokemon. And uh, you could get these creatures and level them up, but once you have a main party of four that are just the main human characters, the golems are completely obsolete, but it's nice to have. Uh, so anyway, the uh, let's see, what else can I say? The voice acting is atrocious. <laughs> It's really bad, but it, it adds, like, a lot of character and charm to it. Like, you can put on the Japanese, it can, you can feel better, but, like, if you want, like, the authentic, really bad nonsense from this game, I recommend you keep it in English. And so, pretty much, the, it's the three guys are in the high school, and they they encounter this this devil golem, which is, like, the super golem. Not Gollum from Lord of the Rings. And it's she's called the Queen of Ice. And she beats the ever-loving heck out of the three cast. They get separated. And Atsuma meets uh, a few characters along the, his journey when he's separated. He meets a princess called Kareen. He meets her bodyguard, Rygar, which is like a, a straight man. And uh, you, the only straight character, the only the straight game. character in the game, literally, and uh, a uh, a cowgirl looking little girl called Yuki who shoots people. Rhaegar has this giant it. anime sword, and Kareen gets her powers through her leggings. I think so. If, That's the hottest. Thing that is, I've ever heard. I know she has water powers. She squirts on the enemies. I guess. <laughs> And so you, you make your way and you go to all these, this, this Japanese dojo place. You go to the fields, the desert, the ice place. And you have all these great adventures with these weeaboo anime characters. And occasionally you meet this, this man called the Mystery Man. This very suave man who wears sunglasses. But Scott, I need to tell you, he looks very similar to Makoto. He looks pretty much the same. Yeah, but he has like this cool outfit. How do you tell them apart? And he, but he, he talks swoove, ooh, suave. He goes, oh, bambina, hello there, and the mystery man. And he doesn't sound remotely stereotypically gay at all. And uh, another thing, Toya is being con mind controlled by the Ice Queen, so he, they have to stop that. So towards the end of the game, I decide to try to beat the game months ago, and I made it to the Queen of Ice, and it looked like she killed this mystery man. So it got personal. The mystery man is like my guy. He was the new Makoto. I loved him. So I was fighting her and I couldn't win because she had these four enemies surrounding her that would constantly suck away my health and regenerate health for her, which made it impossible. And every time you killed them, every turn, they'd come back in full health. So I needed to grind. And because of this quarantine, I had the time to level up and I spent hours and hours 
during quarantine leveling up. And I finally beat her, and I finally beat those stupid little things that suck the life away from you like leeches. And she got a super form, but it was easier than her original form. And in the following cutscene, you rescue Toya. Atsuma, the main character, is about to be hit. And the mystery man jumps aside. His sunglasses come off. And the biggest plot twist ever. The mystery man was the gay man this whole time, Scott. He was Makoto. But wait. Are, are Makoto and mystery man ever seen together no. in the same scene? We, th- we assume that they Makoto never... died. But how did he live? I don't know. And he once his sunglasses came off, all the testosterone in his body just left, and he, he now talks like this. And like he's and then Atsuma the main character is like, Yo, Makoto, why aren't you don't you like try to dress like a lady? And why are you dressed like this? And he goes, A lady would be ashamed to do what I did. And he's like, That's why you were the way you were this whole time, this swamp macho guy? And then he's like, Yeah. <laughs> he's like, I'm here for you, Toya baby. And like he like it was this total character change, and then he reverted back to his old character. And then the final, final boss happened, and it was tough. It was this golem called Infinity. It was sucking away all my character's health, all my items, my resources to replenish my characters. And I died, and it seemed hopeless. I tried again, and I was down to one character fighting this this final boss that constantly had one form after the next harder and harder and I finally beat it and the game ends with a cutscene they're at this festival celebrating the end and it ends with Makoto no Atsuma grabbing Toya and forcefully having Makoto kiss Toya and that's the end of the game <laughs> you could say that's you, the you, most you can argue and say that it's rapey, but I think it was very progressive for its time. This was before me to hashtag yeah. me too. It was a very different time back in 2006, 2007. And that's uh, Enchanted Arms, a very strange game. Uh, I love the battle mechanics. It's very strategic, sort of like chess for dumb people. And it has a cringy story that you get kind of invested in. And hashtag Makoto. That's all I have to say. That. You know, at first, it sounds really politically incorrect. Yes. But then, <laughs> but then towards the end, you realize that, wait a minute, they were on to something. They, this is, they were, and they totally were. This is bloody brilliant. All right, so how wow. about we, we I, that was, I know it was a lot to take in, so how about we go to another story and take a little break from that? I got a story here. Okay. So, this story, last week, last week we talked about the man... I briefly talked about this man from Tennessee who had stole thousands of gallons of hand sanitizer and such and such. As one does. Sold it to yeah. people. As one scumbag does. He's my dealer. Does. <laughs> he's, he's giving me my goods. The plug. I actually, I smoke hand sanitizer. I think uh, I think you really need to give some of that away to people who could use. Maybe it they can have second hand, my secondhand smoke of the sanitizer, and that they could rub the You're, smoke on their hands. You're a genius. I'm a, You're the wittiest genius. I'm, I'm just like the cr- people who decided that Makoto should be a thing. You're just like Mystery Man, or whatever, <laughs> the mystery guy. <laughs> he was the so, gay guy all the whole time. All right, continue. Maybe he went through a gay con- conversion therapy. I hope not. I want, he, he realized that he couldn't, it wouldn't work. He realized that he should stay true to himself, and he got reverted back to gaydom, which I respect. So back to the story. I'm sorry. So I this week I have another story from Tennessee. So Yo. there is a doctor in Nashville. His name is Doctor Sanal Gupta. Sanal Gupta. I am Sanal Gupta. He's doctor. He's a doctor. Obviously. And by the name Sanal held, Gupta, I could tell. And he held a news conference, and basically he was saying that you know we're running out of masks and stuff, and I think. We need to use diapers now. <laughs> 2,000 Tennessee doctors are petitioning to use diapers now as masks because they just don't have enough masks. Baby diapers. I know. Um, I mean, adult diapers would be too big. 
Should we <laughs> trust the Scoopta character? He was probably bullied as a child, and people called him Augustus Gloopta. And to take revenge as an adult, he recommended that these bullies wear diapers around their face. But he specifically said, use diapers, that way the virus doesn't penetrate. It has It dies in feces. <laughs> Make sure that these are used diapers. <laughs> Make sure oh, to go well. number two in the diaper before you put it on your face. Oh, yeah, God. get the chocolate also, all over your mouth. Who's Augustus Gloop by now? Um... <laughs> <laughs> chocolate doodoo. <laughs> remember that? You remember that from years ago? The the South African man, the preacher, he was like talking about homosexuality, and he said, "We cannot have this. They eat the poo poo." A man's the anus is licked like ice cream. Yeah, I know that video. <laughs> it's terrible. Oh. Makoto would not be happy. So, Makoto does not does not tolerate homophobia in any way, shape. Makoto or so. should no be way. the national bird of America. I think they should have made Makoto wear a rainbow shirt the entire game. He was exuding the aura of a rainbow. He he did not need to make it more obvious, Scott. In that case, except when he was a mystery fun. man, then he was to- a totally different character until his sunglasses came off. And then he's like, "Hey, hey, hey, Toya, baby, I love you." Did they get the idea for Mystery Man from the Mystery Men movie with Ben Stiller? Yeah, they had to. <laughs> they stole Ben Stiller's idea. So I got I got a few stories that I just want to just run through right now, if you don't mind, Scott, unless you're not done. Please, please. Okay, so this, co- this story seemed innocent when I saw it, and then it got really bad, so I'll just tell you about it. So it was a naked couple okay. fighting in their car. <laughs> Outside of a Florida mall, because they can't go into the mall. Are you sure they were fighting, Brandon? They weren't naked and doing something. Well, else. Scott, I, I, I will tell you the truth. <laughs> so the naked oh, couple Jesus. were wrestling, not, 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 sure. not sexually, and they're wrestling after a nice, sweet session of coitus, due to yeah. quote a pee napkin, what a pee napkin, I t- a, 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 a napkin full of urine. So a witness called 911 when they saw this 21-year-old guy bro it out with his girlfriend. It could have been you or me, Scott, except we're gamers, and we wouldn't even go outside to our cars. Brandon, women scare me. I can't approach a woman. Not even an animal crossing when they look like ducks. No, that's too intimidating. I know they're going to call me names. Going to quack at me. So this woman from from the little tussle in the car sustained Injuries on her neck. She was choked out. So, yeah, not not too funny anymore. The two were drinking before, and uh, why you little? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> causing the woman to throw the urine cloth at her lover, causing this classic little tussle. <laughs> Honestly, that's why that's why I like Makoto. Although he forcefully kissed Toya at the end of Enchanted Arms, which could kind of be seen as bad. <laughs> at least he didn't choke him out. So that guy pulled a PB on his girlfriend. Can you explain what pulling a PB is for people? I don't know if we've ever talked about this before on one of our videos, but for those who don't know, we, me and Brandon, back in November, we did a review of it. We watched Arctic Dogs in theaters before we weren't quarantined and we were able to go see a movie. <laughs> that was the movie we chose. And that was the movie we chose. And... Long story short, the movie was really bad. The mo- movie, his name was PB for Polar Bear. He's a big polar bear. He's, this is a kid, it's an animated kids movie. And so the main character in Arctic Dogs, his name is Swifty. He's like a small little white fox. And PB and Swifty are really good friends. And then they're, they're, there's a scene where they're just talking and everything's normal. Wait, so yeah. So, and all of a sudden, wait, hold up, PB hold up. loses his mind and he's... Let me give more context. Pull it up. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Swift. <laughs> so Swifty, the main character, got this promotion as a sled dog, and PB was cheering him on. He's like, "Yeah, buddy, I'm so happy for you. You're my guy." And then he's like, "You know, I, 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 get, I delivered a package to this walrus, and I think he kidnapped these missing sled dogs who were missing, and that's why I got the job." And instead of maybe considering this totally rational theory, hypothesis, PB loses it. He goes from supporting his best friend to hating his guts. <laughs> but then then the next – and then they play this, this dramatic music from Avengers Endgame that was very sad and 
displeasing. But uh, a scene later, <laughs> PB got over it and they're friends again. So whenever someone just snaps for no reason, Scott and I will always say they pulled a PB. That's right. It's <laughs> our little inside joke. And now you're in on it too. So I got uh, just two more stories. Bear with me. So now there's 39 new cases mm-hmm. of the coronavirus in, um, I think it was Kentucky, after one person, just one person, attended a coronavirus party. It took one person to get 39 what is people a coronavirus sick. Party? A party either ce- celebrating the coronavirus or against it. <clears throat> I mean, if these people were dumb enough to be together and not social distance, it probably supporting corona. And these guys are in their in their twenties. <laughs> Could be like you and me, Scott. And because they decided they were dumb enough to have a party, now they have the coronavirus. So they had a party, pretty much celebrating the end of humanity, and they all got sick. It, well, if they they did what they wanted, they got their last wow. party. Good for them. I'm happy for them. And Scott, I got one more story for you. One way to go. Huh? It's called. Um, it's Please. about a rocket lab postponing. Their next launch to New Zealand. And I thought it was funny because the mission was called Don't Stop Me Now. Like the Queen song. <laughs> Did Adam Lambert get diagnosed? No, I mean the last time... Wait, Adam Lambert has the... No, 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 no. He, I, as, far as, I, as far as I know, he's totally fine. He's singing. The last thing they did with Queen did is they had a, a concert f- to raise money for Australia, for the forest fires or whatever, which is really nice. But now there's a bigger problem with Corona, oh. so maybe they can have a Skype concert tour, which I'd totally love to go to, and meet Adam Lambert, who is literally the Mak- Makoto of musicians. Love him to death. <laughs> He's another gay icon, though. So now anytime we talk about something that's homosexual, we're going to refer to Makoto. Makoto, yeah. He- He's awesome. Makoto's awesome. Yeah, so if you have maybe parents or grandparents or people who, of an older generation who may not be so supportive of gay rights and the LGBTQ plus community, just show them Enchanted Arms, a, a gameplay of Enchanted Arms. And once they see Makoto and they relate to his character, they'll realize, you know what? He's just like you and me. And I'm starting to be attracted to the same sex and you'll love Makoto and you'll love gay people. And speaking of arms, Brandon, I don't know if you saw the other day, they announced there was a small Nintendo Direct. Yes, there was. I don't know if you heard about it. I did this. hear about it. And they we won't talk about too much of what happened in that Direct. It wasn't really that exciting, admittedly. But what's the one thing that wasn't was admitting, exciting? But they they announced the next Smash Bros. character. And it's going to be a, a character from the game ARMS, the fighting game on the Switch. ARMS. I don't know if you've ever played ARMS. I played it once, and... It, yeah, it was okay. I didn't. I didn't have like a, a great time with it. But I see that it's a part of Nintendo's I think, history. I think it's pretty fun. It's it's a really like it's one of those games that was popular for a few months and then disappeared completely. Right. Yeah. So I'm really surprised that it's going to be in Smash. I thought it w- they would have made an Arms character and earlier for Smash. Arms is already in. Smash. Yeah. So you know what? Arms is also a good game to play in quarantine because. You can actually use the Joy Cons, the controllers, to move your fist like you're punching, and that's what you do in the in the game. You use your arms to punch other characters. So, good way to get out, let off some steam, and even Smash Brothers. Uh, there's so many characters to play as; it's kind of great. Uh, other fighting games you could play: um, Injustice Two is very popular. Marvel vs. Capcom Two or Three. I love Injustice. Uh, Mortal Kombat for sure. Three is ultimate. Combat? No, I'm not talking about the Mortal porn Kombat. version of Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Brandon, I wish I wish that guy in your story who choked out his girlfriend would have played a fighting game instead of fighting his girlfriend. Exactly. Maybe played Enchanted Arms and realized that you know what? The the most you could do is kiss the person that you're interested in and stop there like Makoto did for Toya. Exactly. Don't go any further. Yes. Just remember the words Makoto said. But uh, you know, everyone. He said, uh, everyone in the. I'm gay. Everyone in the game was really disgusted when he when he kissed Toya. I I think I think it's just because PDA is yeah. not okay. I'm sure they're all okay with Makoto being Makoto. <laughs> and that's that's I, all I have to say they about should that. Should be. They should be. Yeah. Uh, any any other game recommendations 
that you can give the lovely listeners? Um, well, it's not a game I've been playing recently. Is Metroid Prime, if you have it. Oh, yes. Or any Classic Metroid game. I grew up with that game. Uh, in, in Metroid, the beauty about Metroid the series, is... you're stranded in this, this alien world, and it's you and your wits, and you're playing as this this really awesome bounty hunter named Samus Aran, and she has to gain all these power-ups and slowly gain strength and discover new areas and backtrack and use new power-ups to go to places you couldn't have. So that's a great game because you're kind of isolated in quarantine and you can sort of feel for Samus. Uh, something that I played before quarantine, uh, Shadow of the Colossus, which is one of the best games of all time, where you have to defeat these gigantic enemies and go through all these crazy terrains and use your wits. It's almost like a puzzle game to defeat them. And, I mean, that just brings up the theme of play games that you may have stopped playing. Because maybe you can go back and have a fun time, as I did with Shadow of the Colossus. I even played a bit of my 3DS Super Mario 3D Land. I'm playing a bit of uh, Fire Emblem on my 3DS, so... There's a lot of games you can go back to. Even if you're like, oh, I already beat my games. There's nothing to play. Play them again. And maybe you'll have a new experience or a, a, a changed experience playing these games. So as a gamer, you have no excuse saying quarantine is bad. It's so much fun. You're going to love it. And you have all these games that you could be playing, even if you can't buy new ones. You know, it's also another great game to play in quarantine. What's that? Spyro. Spyro. Yeah. One of my favorite game series Spyro. ever. Yeah. They have the new, um, what is it, the Reignited Trilogy with the, a remastered version of Spyro 1, 2, and 3, some of the best games ever. And they're just a lot of fun. They're, they're cartoony, uh, they're addicting as platformers, and they're not too hard. Like Crash, Bandicoot, those games, they're fun but insanely difficult. But Spyro, you can casually play, so you don't have to break your controller. That's right. That's right. Spyro is so, it's, it, there's no challenge, really. I mean, of course, there's going to be like, challenge. You, know, you have to get all the gems and stuff. Get all the eggs uh, or the yeah, dragon. Save it's the not. Dragons. It's not like Crash Bandicoot. If you want to play Crash Bandicoot, you really have to focus. You really hate yourself. Yeah, if you're doing that. But uh, anywho, uh, I think we should we should wrap this up. Uh, just everyone, please stay safe. What did we get from this podcast? Uh, stay away from Abbey Road. But if you want to listen to Abbey Road, that's cool too. Don't play the song Don't Stop Me Now by Queen because you'll be upset and you'll think about the rocket launch that will never happen. Be sure to wear diapers that are used instead of uh, masks because they work better. It's true. Don't choke out your girlfriend. It's not cool. Uh, what What else? What else? Play fighting games instead. Play fighting games instead of beating your uh, girlfriend. Well... Be nice to the LGBTQ community. Cool. Play Enchanted Arms. Support Makado, hashtag Makoto, and uh, don't have coronavirus parties. Have Skype parties or whatever if people use Skype. Just go on Zoom or something. Do not actually meet people, social distance, social distance, social distance, and Makoto. That's what I'll leave you with. Uh, Scott, any last words? Watch some really bad movies. Watch the Fat Albert movie if you can. Actually... There's uh, there's this movie I saw. I, I actually watched this movie the other day. Uh, you, remember, you remember the movie The Martian with Matt Damon? Yeah, it's actually a pretty good movie. If if, if nobody's if nobody's ever seen that movie, please watch that movie. That movie's amazing. I just watched it the other day. So remember to watch movies, play video games, don't interact with people, and sit on the couch all day. Scott, it's been so much fun doing this podcast. I can't wait to do it again next week. Uh, until then, you can find us on Spotify, Anchor, TuneIn, YouTube, SoundCloud, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, so many places. We have a website, NonsenseNewsNation.com. You can contact us personally at NonsenseNewsRadio at gmail.com. That is NonsenseNewsRadio at gmail.com. Once again, I've been Brad and Ellis. I've been Scott without a yarmulke. This was Totally Nonsense on Nonsense News Nation, and we are signing off. Peace. Peace.